In this chapter, we will be studying sequences and series. In this lesson, we will be looking at arithmetic sequences. Hi everybody. So now we're going to move on to a new chapter called Sequences and Series. And the first thing we're going to look at here are these arithmetic sequences. Now, this is kind of a, a fun chapter. Uh, in many ways, it's, it's a lot less algebraically intensive than a lot of the pre, uh, previous stuff that we've been doing in this course. It's a nice way to, uh, for, at least for, for the school where I'm at, to end this, this course here. So a sequence is just a set of elements that follow a certain pattern or rule. And, and in this case here, it's uh, with numbers. We're going to be talking about number patterns. They don't have to be number patterns, though. Okay, they can be any, any kind of pattern. I mean, if you've got square, circle, square, circle, square, circle, that's a sequence, right? It's just a, a pattern of, of objects, whatever, that follow a certain specified rule. And we typically separate the, the terms or the elements of the, the sequence by a comma. So, for example, a numeric sequence here, 3, 5, 7, 9. And then we've got this dot, 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 this ellipsis here. That means it goes on forever, right? This is an infinite sequence. It doesn't have to be infinite. You could have a finite sequence, okay? If it's a finite sequence, okay, it's going to have a certain specific number of numbers. Usually, and this is down here a little bit. I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. Usually, we're going to use the letter N to refer to the number of terms in that sequence. Okay, now, we're going to use N for, in, a, in a slightly different way here in just a second as well. But yeah, if we've got a finite sequence, then the number of terms, we would call that N. Now. One of the things that we're going to want to be able to do as we talk through these, uh, this information on sequences and, and whatnot is we want to be able to be specific about which term in the sequence we're talking about. And that's why we've got this thing down here, whoopsie daisy, down here. We've got this, this thing called the general term or the and then I'm going to compare that to the specific term. Now, what we do is every term in the sequence Okay, we're going to represent with a, with a symbol here. Now, we can't use different letters of the alphabet. Like, I can't let A be number one, B be number two, C be number th uh, three, and, and so on. Or the third number, I should say, not, not A is one. A would be the first number, B would be the second, C would be the third, and so on. I've got to do this a slightly different way because once I get 26 numbers in that, that sequence, well, then I'm, I'm done with the alphabet. So what we use here is we use the letter T, okay? and like you're seeing here, 3 is the first num uh, term here. We're going to use a subscript 1 to be our first term. So in this case, our first term would be 3. If I've changed the subscript to 2, the second term is equal to 5. The third term, subscript 3, is equal to, in this case, 7, and, and so on. You can build this up from here. So now, these are all specific terms. Okay. As soon as I put a specific number down as the subscript, I am referring to a specific term in the sequence, whatever that subscript happens to be. Now, if I put an n down here, well, n can be any number. In fact, in, in this particular chapter here, n is actually going to be an element. Okay, This is going to be an element of the naturals. So n is really our counting numbers here. This is going to be our nth term or our general term. Another way of describing it is the general term. Nth term or general term. In other words, we, we talk about it like that when we're not necessarily interested in, in a specific value for n, or sorry, for the term, I should say, but more for how the sequence behaves. Okay, when I'm not telling you what the n specifically is, then I'm kind of interested, more interested in like, you know, how does this, this sequence grow? What is the, the general rule for building the sequence? Okay. Because a lot of times the, the value of the term is related to its position in the sequence. Now, before we get into a, a specific type of sequence, just that last little comment that I made, that can be a hard thing for some people here. I need you to remember here that that there is a difference, okay? There is a difference between what the subscript is and what the value of the sequence is. Uh, the value of the term is, I should say, in the sequence. So term one is three, okay? Term two in this sequence is five. 
the, the subscript here is giving us the position of that term in the sequence. But the, the value of that term could really be anything. I'd have to look at the rule here. So now just, just to, to kind of further that, based on that right here, based on what I'm trying to tell you here, if I was to come over here and say, okay, okay, what is T4 in this sequence? Well, you're probably looking at that saying, well, the answer is, the answer is nine. Great, that's awesome. What if I asked you, what is T5? Now notice that doesn't show up here. So I have to now think about what the rule is. Starting at three here, what did I do? I added two to get five. Now what did I do to get from five to seven? I added two. What did I do to get from seven to nine? I added two. So to get the next term in the sequence, you're probably gonna have to add two. So I'm gonna get 11. What I want you to note here is that when I asked you for the fifth term in the sequence, the answer did not automatically become five. Okay? When I ask you, if I was to ask you, now, what is the 20th term in the sequence? The answer is not 20. Okay, it's, it's something else here. Please try to keep the, the number of the term in the sequence with the value of the term. Okay, there are two different kinds of, of values going on there. Where the term is in the sequence and the value of the term. So just please try to keep that separate there. Then we should be fine here. All right, now let's take a look at the first type of sequence that we're going to, to look at. And there's really only two that we're gonna look at. The first one is an arithmetic sequence, okay? And to get an arithmetic sequence, what we do is we, we have a certain starting point here, and then we add a common difference. And we're gonna use the letter D to represent that common difference. Now that sequence that we were just looking at here, that's a great example of an arithmetic sequence. I started at the letter three, so T1 was letter three. I can't believe I just said that. Ugh. I started the number three. So T1, first term is three. Okay, now to get to that term, I, I don't have to add anything else to it. That, that is the starting point. So I'm, I'm okay with that. But to get to my second term, T2, I start with my first term and I add two to it. Okay, so I'm gonna add a two. To get my third term, I take my second term, I hope this is clear here, that right there is my second term, and then I add two to it. So it's like taking the first term and adding two twos. To get the fourth term, I take the third term, okay, and I hope you're seeing the connection there, that three plus two plus two, that's my third term, and I add two to it. So I'm adding three twos. Now, remember, we just said a little while ago, we're gonna use the letter D to refer to that common difference. So in this case here, the two's there, they're all gonna be a D. And notice that whatever number I throw here, the number of D's that I add is always one less than that. So for example, in this particular sequence, if I wanted to know what the 10th term was, okay, I would start at three, now watch how this goes here. For the fourth term, it was three plus three twos. If I want the tenth term, it's gonna be, th whoops, sorry, three plus nine twos. Now the reason why it's nine, if I, can, if I can take a moment here to explain that, the reason why it's one less than the term number you're looking for is because to get the first term, I don't need to add that common difference. I don't need it. The, the first time I need that, common difference is when I'm looking at the second term, and then in which case I only add a single, a single two to it. So now here, nine times two is 18, plus three is 21, so I can tell right now that the 10th term is going to equal 21. Now, in general, how would that look if I wanted the nth term? Now, watch this. Up to this point, I've been looking for specific terms in the sequence, okay, specific terms. Now all of a sudden, I'm gonna talk about the nth term. Now I'm not specifying specifically which term it is in the sequence, I just want the nth one. So what I'm trying to ask for here is, what does this sequence look like? How does it behave? What maybe is the formula that I can use? Well, I know that every one of these terms, okay, every time I use this expression, I start with three. I know that I'm gonna multiply something by two. Now the question is, what am I multiplying by two? Well, in every case, when I knew what the n was that I was looking for, I always subtracted one from that n 
to do my calculation. So if I want the nth term, it's going to be 3 plus whatever that n is, minus 1, multiplied by 2. That is the nth term or the general term for this, yoink, for this specific sequence. Okay? Tn is equal to 3 plus n minus 1 times 2. Now, to be fair, you probably wouldn't leave it like that. You probably would multiply that 2 through and then get here that Tn is equal to uh, 2n plus 1 when you simplify that. Whoops, it's starting to look a little bad there. 2n plus 1. And so that is the simplified form of that. But that's the general term as opposed to the specific terms that I'm looking for here. Now, if we're talking about an arithmetic sequence, the general formula of an arithmetic sequence where n is, again, some element of the naturals, the way I compare that to the one I just did here is instead of putting uh, the 3 in there, I'm going to put the t1 to represent the first term. And the d here is going to take the place of that common difference. And so now that right there, everybody, is the, is the general term or the nth term um, of a arithmetic sequence. Okay? Okay. I hope that, I hope that makes sense here. Now, there is another way that, that um, sometimes gets used here. Sometimes we actually do use the letter A to be the first term. So you will see this every once in a while written like this where Tn is equal to A plus N minus 1 times D. I just want you to be aware of that. Uh, I think the, I think recently some changes in the curriculum have been made and they, they want us to be using the T sub 1 just for consistency sake, but you will see that show up every once in a while where they use A for that first term. Okay, but here, just so that you see everything here, here's our formula. Okay, the general term or the nth term. Okay, general term. As, again, as soon as you plug a value in for n, you are now looking for a specific term. When I'm looking for the general term, or, or sometimes we call that the last term if we know that there are, okay, if there are n terms, in other words, we, we don't know how many terms there are, it's just the nth one, then we might call the t sub n the, the last term. t1 will be the first term. Uh, we're trying to get the position, so it's n minus 1 multiplied by that common difference. All right, so there's our formula. So now, if, if that's not making a lot of sense to you right now, don't worry. Once we start to go through a bunch of examples, this is going to make a lot of sense. Um, and what you're going to see in this chapter very specifically here is that this really is about practicing your algebra skills. Okay, we're going to get this equation and then, and then we're going to have to look for parts of it. It's really what's going to happen here. So you're going to see us spend a lot of time manipulating equations. So, and you're going to get a bunch of them in this chapter. And so the, the, the trick really is going to be just determining which one you've got to use and then doing a little bit of manipulation to find the one piece that the question's asking for. Let's take a look at some problems. Okay, here we go. So we're going to use the sequence 3, 5, 7, 9 again uh, to answer the following question. So first of all, find the general term. Okay, so the general term is going to be T sub N. So in this case right here, we don't know which term it is in the sequence. Now think about where the N shows up in the sequence. Right here. So if I don't know what the specific n is I'm supposed to be working with, I don't know the specific n that goes in right here. So when I ask you for the general term, what I'm asking you to do here is give me enough information here so that I know exactly what the structure of the sequence is that you're looking for. Okay? So every term in this sequence is going to be built from, well, what starting term? 3. So the nth term is going to start with 3. And then n minus 1. I haven't specified a, a term here, so I don't know what the value of n is supposed to be, so we leave it as a variable n. If you knew what term it was, you would simply subtract 1 from that, and then in this particular case here, multiply by 2. This is the general term of the sequence. But again, we don't want you to leave it like that because this chapter is really about practicing your algebra skills. So we're going to distribute that 2 through then we're going to combine together like terms and we'll get that the nth term or the general term is going to be 2n plus 1. That's the formula that we're looking for. Okay? 
So this right here is going to, by, by plugging in the different values for n and using this formula, we can find each of the specific terms in the formula. But really all I need to, to, uh, all I need to give you, to give you enough information to build this entire sequence is what the first term is and what the common difference is. From there, you can build that entire sequence. And that's what this is telling you. You can find any term in the sequence if you know the first term and what you go up by. So now let's just use that. So find the 12th term. Okay. So now, as soon as I say that, 12 becomes the subscript. 12 takes the place of n. If it takes the place of n here, in the in this expression, then it's going to take the place of the 12 in the formula. So t sub 12 becomes 2 times 12 plus 1. t sub n is equal to 2 times n plus 1. Now I just evaluate this. 2 times 12 is 24 plus 1 is 25. So the 12th term of this sequence is 25. This next one here says let's find n if the term is 37. In other words, now what we're doing here is we're asking this in a slightly different way here. Now I know what the term is. The term is 37. That's the TN. What I don't know is which term in the sequence it is. That's what the N value is all about. Remember N is the type of number that N is. N is first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and so on. So I'm trying to figure out what the appropriate N is that goes with 37. So now I plug that in. I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides, and then I'll divide by 2. And what this tells me here is that 37 is the 18th term. So that's kind of what I was trying to get at before here, where, where once you get the equation, what this is really going to be about is just manipulation of that equation to find a given piece. What we really need to do, what the difficulty here is, is going to be to, to get you to, to be comfortable with what the variables mean. Particularly here to understand that this is not t times n, this is t sub n. So when you see t sub up here, you see this t subscript 12, okay, that you understand that, that means that in the formula n is 12. And now by the way, now that you've got this equation here, just let me add one more question here. Now that you've got this equation, what if I asked you for the 200th term? So I'm looking for t sub 200. Now what you're supposed to do here, because I have the general term up here, this is in general how that behaves. This would be 2 times 200 plus 1. So this becomes 401. What I beg of you here is please, when we give you the general term of the sequence, when we give you the ability to come up with the general term of the sequence, okay, please use the formula. Don't be the person who goes, oh, you want the 200th term? Oh, I, I just don't like formulas. So here I go, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and, and so on, and give me all 200 terms. Okay, there's almost always somebody on an exam that does that. Oh, please don't do that. Use the formula. That, this question becomes gigantic if you've got to go through every term in the sequence. Use, get comfortable with the formula, use the formula. Okay, let's take a look at another one here. F uh, for the following sequence, negative 6, negative 3, 0, 3, dot, 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 up to 33. Okay, now notice dot, 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 and then 33. So this is finite. This sequence ends right there. Now we want to find the general term or the nth term. Now that is t sub n is equal to t sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Okay, we already know that. n is now the variable because I'm asking for the nth term. So I know that I'm going to get a plus n minus 1. I, I don't know the value of n, so I leave it as n. This sequence starts at negative 6. Perfect. The negative is important. Don't, don't drop that. Now what am I going up by? What did I do? To go from negative 6 to negative 3, let's just do that. Negative 3 minus negative 6. I'm going to take this term and just subtract this one to figure out what I went up by. So it's like negative 3 plus 6. Oh, it's okay, 3. D is 3. Okay. And then because we are trying to practice our algebra skills, I'm going to distribute that 3 through. And then we're going to get that the nth term, if I put together like terms, is going to be 3n 
minus 9. And there you go. So something that might be worth noting here is that to get D, what I did is I took the, let's say, the second term and subtracted the first term. Or I took the third term and subtracted the second term. Or the fourth term, subtract the third term. So if I basically just take two consecutive terms and find the difference between them, that's how I get D. All right, so here's my general term. This is the nth term. Not being specific, now all of a sudden I'm going to be specific. I'm replacing the t, sorry, the n with a 10. So I'm asking for the 10th term. This is going to be 3 multiplied by 10 minus 9. 30 minus 9. We know that the 10th term is going to be 21. Okay. Now, the next question says, determine the number of terms in the sequence. Okay, and I've got to think about that. This is the first term, this is the second term, this is the third term, this is the fourth term. Da, da, da. If I went up here, just, just, I'm throwing this out here. If I knew that this was the twelfth term, if I knew that 33 was the twelfth term, then how many terms were there in the sequence? Well, the answer would have been 12. And if you're, if you're having a hard time seeing this, well, just watch this. If this is the whole sequence right here, if this is the whole sequence and negative 6 is the first term, how many terms are there? One. Okay, let's, let's look at this one. If this is the entire sequence, negative 3 here is my second term, how many terms are in the sequence? Two. If this is my sequence, 0 is my third term, how many terms are in the sequence? Three. Basically, the term number of the last term is the number of terms in the sequence. If, if people are running a race, if the last person is the 100th person, there were 100 people running the race. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use this formula right here. I know what the last term is. It's 33. What my unknown is, is the n value that goes with that. So I'm going to add 9 to both sides. So it's going to be 42. Okay. And when I divide... Okay, 42 divided by 3, okay, you're going to get 14. So what that means is that there were 14 terms in the sequence. The 33 was the 14th term. There were 14 terms in the sequence. Okay, let's keep going here. If t sub n is equal to 3n minus 2, and this is the general term of an arithmetic sequence, we're going to find the first four terms. Okay, good. So here we go. There's our term of the sequence. So first of all, we're going to find t1. That means replacing the n in the, ex in the expression here with a 1. So we replace it here with a 1. So 3 minus 2 is going to be 1. For the second term in the sequence, I replace the n with a 2. So 3 times 2 minus 2. Now, 3 times 2 is 6, minus 2 is going to be 4. To get my third term, now, now watch this. Before I even get to my third term, uh, hold on a second. This is an arithmetic sequence. What did I do to go from 1 to 4? Well, I added 3, which means I suspect that my next answer here, if I add 3 to that, is going to be 7. Now, I'm just guessing here. Because there's supposed to be a pattern here. Let's just take a look and see if that's true. 3 times 3, I replaced n with 3, minus 2. 9 minus 2, there it is, 7. So I'm guessing right now that if I'm adding 3, adding 3, that the next term is going to be 7. Sorry, 7, wow, 10. 7 plus 3, 10. So 3 times 4, I replace n with 4. 12 minus 2 is 10, yeah. Because I know that this is an arithmetic sequence, I actually only needed to get the first two terms to be very clear on the difference. Now, in a lot of cases, I can just look at the formula and tell you what the common difference is. Okay, that's going to be your, your 3n there. But these have been simplified down a little bit, so sometimes it's not always clear. Uh, so it's just as easy just to evaluate the first couple terms and then find the difference. This one, find the missing terms of the following sequence. Okay, so we've got blank, blank, 
comma 7, comma 7.5, comma 8. Okay, well, here's a question here where you don't want to put in more effort than is worth here. What am I doing to go from term to term here out here? Well, I'm adding, but I'm only adding a half. Okay, adding a half. So to move forward in the sequence, I added a half at every turn. So how about I go backwards and find these two? I'm simply going to subtract a half. So 7 minus a half will be 6.5. To go backwards one more step, 6.5 minus a half is going to end up being 6. And that's all you got to do for a question like that. And in fact, I, I would encourage you, please don't do more work than that. Okay, don't do more work than that. If that's the way the question's worded. It might not be worded like that. It might be worded like this. Find the missing terms of the following sequence. Negative 20, blank, 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 24. Okay, this is a little different here. Now, there are a couple of different ways that you can do this. Um, I, I'm going to choose right now to focus on the formula. Just because uh, we give you the formula, I want you to be, to be comfortable with the formula here. So take a look at the information that you're given here. Right off the bat, I see that this is a finite sequence. There's only five terms in this sequence. I know that T1 the first term is equal to negative 20. I can read that right off of that. I also know that the fifth term is 24. Now, I just want to think about this. When I think back to what we were looking at when we were first building the sequences, I knew that I didn't need to add my common difference to get the first term. In fact, the first term stood on its own. Where I needed the common difference was to get any other term in the sequence. So for me to get that 20, that the fifth term was 24, I needed that common difference a few times. Now the reason why that's important is because I'm going to need to figure out what that common difference is to figure out what these, these three numbers are. So this number here is actually the one that I want to focus my attention on. I know that the fifth term is going to equal the first term plus 5 minus 1 times my common difference. I also know that that fifth term, because of the information given to me in this equation, is going to be 24. So 24, the value of the fifth term is equal to the first term, it's always the first term, plus, now, again remember, the n for this term is, is 5, but I always subtract 1 from it when I put it in front of the, the common difference there. All right, now I've got this nice little equation I can use to solve for d. I'm going to add 20 to both sides, so I'm going to get 44 is equal to 4d. Then I'm going to divide by 4 and get that 11 uh, is equal to d. So that's my common difference. All right, now that I know the common difference, I can build this thing up from there. I know that negative 20 plus 11 is going to be negative 9. Plus 11 is going to be equal to 2. Plus 11 is going to be equal to 13. And so I was able to use that common difference that I found to fill in the rest of the sequence. Easy. Okay, what's this one asking? This one asking us to find the TN or the general term and then the eighth term for the following sequence. Okay, well now don't don't look at this and, and, ah, because you're seeing some complicated terms here. Just let's identify what we know first. First of all, I know that the first term is 5 root 3. Okay? It's just that first term in its entirety. Now, my d value, d is the common difference. Now, to get the common difference, all I've ever had to do is take a term in the sequence and subtract the one before it. So 8 root 3 minus 5 root 3. So if I had 8 root 3's and I took away 5 root 3's, I would have been left with 3 root 3's. That's my common difference. If you take 11 root 3 and subtract 8 root 3, it should be the same value and in fact it is. So there we go. We know the first term and the common difference. But if that's true, well then I know everything. Okay, I know everything I need to know about this sequence. 
So I'm able from right from there to come up with the general term of my sequence. My nth term, okay, again, without being specific, without plugging in a specific n, is going to be first term, 5 root 3, plus n minus 1 times d, 3 root 3. We are also, remember, we're also practicing our algebra here, so I'm going to distribute that 3 root 3 to both of these terms here. Now that is, going to, for some of you, that's going to look a little weird because of the radical symbol, but that's going to be 3 root 3 times n minus 3 root 3 because I had to multiply that by the negative 1. Okay, and that's my nth term. And now, to finish this off here, I've got to group together like terms. Now I can put those together. So I've got this 3 root 3 n plus 2 root 3. Okay, when I, when I put the 5 root 3 and I subtract that, that 3 root 3. Good. There's the general term of the sequence and it's simplified. Now, to get the eighth term, okay, I'm replacing the, the n, okay? And in this case, you might want to think about it if we want to use the proper vocabulary. That's going to be like our, our independent variable. I'm going to take that n and replace it with 8. So it's going to be 3 root 3 times 8 plus 2 root 3. Whoops, it's off the screen. Remember, you multiply coefficients, so that's going to be 24 root 3. Okay, there is no other radical there to multiply by that root 3, so it stays like that. Plus 2 root 3. And 24 root 3 plus 2 root 3 is going to be 26 root 3. That's the eighth term of the sequence. All right, let's look at a few more. In this case, find the nth term, the general term, and the 20th term for a sequence that has t1 equal to negative 3z and the common difference is 7z. Okay, now, for some people that is going to be a little intimidating because I don't have exact numbers for that. I've got these variables thrown in there. So as soon as that happens, this question is about the algebra, not the specific number. Okay, and in fact, that's, that's always been true about that. As soon as we start throwing letters in here, then the question isn't about getting a specific answer. It's about the procedure. It's about the relationship, not the specific answer. So now to get the nth term, that is the first term plus n minus 1 times the common difference. So I am going to, I am not specifying what the n is, so I'm going to leave that n minus 1 in there. Now I go to what I'm given here. I was told that the first term is negative 3z. Well, that goes here, negative 3z plus n minus 1 times d, and in this case, it's 7z. Huh. Well, that's, that's what this tells me. That's what it's got to look like. I'm not going to get a specific number out of that. Okay, because now I've got two unknowns. Now, just as we've done before, this is about the algebra. So we're going to take that 7z and we're going to distribute it to both of those terms right there inside that little binomial. So there's the first term, negative 3z, plus 7zn minus 7z. So the nth term of my sequence, now I'm going to group together the two like terms, these two right here, is going to be 72n minus 10z. Oh, uh, 72, sorry. I lost the z and I don't know why. 72zn minus 10z. Okay, so there's our general term. Now what we're going to do, the question asks us to go a little bit further than that. What we're going to do now is we're going to find the 20th term. So that means replacing the n in the notation here with 20, and so therefore replacing it with uh, 20 in the little function here. So this is going to be 72z times 20 minus 10 times z. Okay, well, 72 times 20 is going to be 1440z. I still don't know what the value of z is, so I just leave it there. Minus 10z. Now, I'm not going to be able to get an exact number for this. Even though I'm specifying a term in the sequence, I, I just don't have enough information. 
but these are like terms. And so I can actually go one step further and say that the answer here would be 1,430z. So just given those two right there, even though there's a variable in there, I'm, I'm still able to, to walk it through. I'm just not getting nice exact values for that, and that's okay. That's totally fine. Let's take a look at another one here. List the terms of the, of the uh, graph here and find Tn here. Okay, so you should see here that you can actually represent this, these arithmetic sequences by points on a, on a graph here. In fact, if I give you the general term Tn is equal to, um, what was it, T1 plus N minus 1 D, okay, you might have noticed that this is very similar to Y is equal to B plus, uh, and actually the way I've got it written here, I wouldn't write like this, plus XM. This is like the equation of a line. Now it's written kind of a weird order to match with this one right here. But yeah, an arithmetic sequence looks very similar, okay, to the equation of a line where the common difference is taking the place of the slope. Now the difference being here with a line, we're typically putting in values for X and those are going to be element of the reals. But when we talk about a sequence here, N, is an element of the naturals, and so therefore we've got a whole bunch of discrete points that are unconnected. There's no interval here between these things. It's just point, 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 point. Okay, so now what we've got here is our first term. What do we say there is going to be 60 when I read that off? Our second term, T sub 2, is 50. And that's enough for me already there to, to figure out what the pattern is. Okay. But our, our next term here, the third term, is going to be 40. Fourth term is going to be 30. How far do we go up here? It looks like seventh term. Fifth term is going to be equal 20. Sixth term is 10. And the seventh term is 0. Now, we're going to actually come up with our, the general term of this sequence. So T sub N, which is going to be the first term, plus N minus 1 times D. Our first term is 60. Again, because n is the variable, we leave it as n minus 1. Now, in this case, though, take a look at what's the common difference here? Okay, to get the common difference, we take the second term and subtract the first term. Now, 50 minus 60 is negative. Okay, so in this case right here, we're getting a common difference of, of negative. That's okay. Don't let that throw you off. That's totally fine. Okay, that just means that our sequence, the value of our sequence is dropping. Now, expand that out, so you're going to get 60 minus 10n plus 10. And so our general term is going to be negative 10n plus 70. And again, if you compare that to your, your the equation of a line, this looks very similar to y equals mx plus b. You should notice a direct relationship there, which is why, again, the graph is, is linear. All right, let's just do a couple more here. Uh, to rent a banquet hall, it costs $500 plus 300, or sorry, 300, wow, $35 per person. Find the general term and compare it. To, okay, and, and we were just doing this, comparing it to the equation of a line here. So the general term in our sequence, Tn, is going to be uh, 500 plus 35 per person. So 35 times n. Now, I could rewrite that as 35n plus 500. And you can see right away here that in this case here, m is equal to 35 and b is equal to, is equal to 500, okay? Now, that's, compare this to the y equals mx plus b. Okay, it's going to have the same structure as a line. We can identify the slope of the line right away here. Just some things that you should be aware of. That b, that 500, okay? 500 is not a term whoops, in the sequence. Okay, and the reason for that is because there is no zeroth term. Okay, there is no zeroth term. 
with, with the equation of a line, yeah, you can go backwards because we're talking about a domain of all real numbers. But with a sequence, we're restricted to just the natural numbers, the counting numbers, which is why when you're dealing with something like, like this, in many ways, to use an arithmetic sequence is a little bit more appropriate. You, you can't sell a ticket to half of a person. That doesn't make any sense. Okay? You can't have fractions. You have to have discrete numbers of people, which is why this model tends to work out better. However, on the other hand, is it possible that you set up the banquet and nobody shows up? Yep. It would be sad, but it's, it's possible. So there could be this, this uh, situation where actually, yeah, it cost you $500 and then that was it. That was all that you, you paid for because nobody showed up here. So there's a little bit of give or take here. It's similar to this question up here. This is the general term for this sequence, but our general term doesn't tell us that this thing only had the seven points to it. Okay? I kind of have to include that information elsewhere. It's not all, it's all, not all encapsulated by just that line. It just like here, this doesn't give me all the information. It just, it's a nice efficient way of putting together a lot of the information. Let's do one more. What if we know that the fourth term is 26 and the seventh term is 44? We want to find the general term. Okay, well, let's take a look at what this is telling us. Okay, and remember, Tn is equal to T1 plus N minus 1 times D. Okay, that's the formula that we're working from here. So the fourth term is 26. And maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll do this like this. The fourth term is going to equal the first term plus, well, if I know it's the fourth term, I know that n is 4, so this is going to be 4 minus 1, but I don't, I don't know d. Now, I'm going to help myself out here, and I'm going to get rid of that t4, and I'm going to put 26 there, because that's, that's what I needed to be there. The seventh term is going to be the first term plus 7 minus 1, whoops, times D, because this is the seventh term, N is seven, and now I'm going to replace that T sub seven with 44. Okay, so notice I've got two equations with two variables. This is a system of equations. Now I'm going to clean this up a little bit. I'm going to put that second equation on top, that top equation. I'm going to put this down below here because, uh, well, I'm hoping you're seeing why I'm doing it. Because now what I can do is I can take this equation here and subtract the one below it. Okay? So what have I got here? 44 minus 26 is going to be 18. T1 minus T1 goes away. That's awesome. 6D minus 3D is going to be 3D. And then as a result, I know that D is going to equal 6. That's fantastic. So I know my common difference here just by using that system of equations. Now I can go back up. And let's say I go back up to the, to, well, let's go back up to this equation right here. This 26 is equal to T1 plus 3D. I can solve for T1. 26 is equal to T1, still don't know what that is, plus 3 times my common difference, 6. So 26 is equal to T1 plus 18. Okay, so now 26 minus 18 and we're going to get that T1 is equal to 8. That's what I needed for my general term. I need the first term and I need the common difference. Because remember, Tn, if you don't know which term it is in the sequence, that's going to be your n minus 1. Okay, that's why we have n minus 1 there because I haven't specified anything. That's my first term plus n minus 1 times my common difference. And now again, to clean this up, I'm going to distribute the 6 through and then my final step here is going to be to group together the like terms, so 6n plus 2. That's the value that we're looking for. Hope that helps.